right, guys, so we're back. We're talking about a whole bunch of different gymnastics injuries and some flexibility or strength problems that people have. And something I want to spend a couple minutes on today is uh, unfortunately a problem that I've seen a ton in the clinic is going to be hamstring injuries. So ischiopophysitis is, refers to the growth plate of your uh, high hamstring area, kind of pulling away and getting fractured or having a high hamstring tendinopathy. And I definitely think that the number one reason that things, these are happening is because of overuse, right? We have a lot of young athletes that are going through growth spurts and they are doing a ton of leaps and jumps and running and stallers and in bars and we're not counting how many they're doing. But I think the next commonly overlooked per, uh, thing to this is that we're going to have people who definitely may have hamstring flexibility issues, but more so importantly, you have to remember that the hamstring attaches up to the pelvis high in the uh, upper hamstring area, attaches right to your lower back and your spine off the growth plate of your hip bone, right? So if you're really, really arched, that's going to actually pull on your hamstring a lot more, right? If you're someone who can control their core and knows how to get flat and neutral, you might give the hamstring a little bit of a break. So yes, it's important that you're counting how many you're doing and that you're doing your flexibility and you're doing strength work and eccentric training, right? But if you have an athlete who's developing a very overarched uh, lower back position and they're sprinting and they're doing stalders or they're doing split jumps and things like that, you might have someone who puts a ton more pressure on their hamstring, right, over time causing that fracture or that injury. So you have to look at someone's core position. You can't just look at how their hamstrings and their glutes are kind of working together. And I'll show a couple examples of this. These are tests that I use all the time in the clinic to say, okay, do you have a hamstring flexibility problem or do you have a core control problem? So we'll have Taylor stand here and she doesn't have an injury but this is kind of what we do on everyone else so the first thing is i'm going to have her just stand normal feet are going to go together right and she's going to do a pike stretch but she's going to do it more of an arch position right so this is how typically more athletes stand is in that little bit of an arch position and you can see that she gets stuck do you feel that in your hamstrings yep. yeah so earlier she gets really really stuck now if she stands up so now think about an athlete who knows how to control their core and is a little bit more hollow now let's do a pike stretch for me she can clearly go a lot further right and so when she comes back up we haven't really changed her hamstring length right like we're arching her back more we're tugging on something called the sciatic nerve and we're also pre-tensioning the hamstring but as soon as we're allowed we know how to control our core and get flat we posteriorly tilt our pelvis and we slack some of that hamstring and another way that we can sh uh, show this on the table right just for kind of further example is if we lay somebody down flat and their legs go straight right if someone's uh, legs are out straight like this right if somebody is naturally in an arch position so they have more of an arch in their back when I try to lift their leg up passively right I get to about here and she starts to feel sore there right and then come back down so now i say okay flatten your core hollow in and now we'll see how far i can get her right clearly i have quite a bit more length right now what have i done there i haven't done a magic trick all i've done is i've hollowed her in so that her po uh, posterior tilt of her pelvis pulls her hamstring a little bit more uh, slack and she has more flexibility right so there's a couple of drills that we can work to kind of integrate this core and hip control together probably my go-to one that i do is going to be a band assisted leg raise right so now what we're going to do is we're going to have i would kind of put this against a low bar or a rig but i'm going to have her hold right and she's going to pull down on the band what that's going to do is it's going to posteriorly tilt her and make her core fire right so hollow in pull down into the flatness of the ground right and then we're going to pull down this way right and this is a really good way to integrate some of those drills together to make it tucking our core under but also leg raising right so after this like how do you get this to transfer over to actual gymnastic skills yes in your warm-up do more hamstring work do more soft tissue prep do more eccentric training with maybe some deadlifting or slide outs but try to make sure that athletes are doing sprinting drills with themselves tucked in a hollow position try to make sure that when they do stallers they're not super arched or when they do toe ins they're not super extended right because that's going to tug on their hamstring when they do jumps and when they do leaps try to encourage them to have more of a natural hollow position obviously people are going to arch and they're going to get if you have a big ring or a sheep jump they're going to have this big extension of their back but if they're doing that all of the time in all of their jumps and leaps and running that might cause some of that sensitive growth plate tissue to get a little